The topic I've selected to research is the effects of using CRISPR technology for the neurodegenerative disorder known as multiple sclerosis. Starting off, multiple sclerosis is a disorder that damages nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord, ultimately causing the neurons to die. Biologically, a person's immune system recognizes the CNS myelin as unfamiliar and targets the production of, or maintenance of the myelin sheath around the axon. There's a group of genes on chromosome 6 that can cause MS, and on this chromosome, there are genes known as HLA-DRB1, which solely provides the instruction to make proteins that play a critical role in the immune system. Without these instructions, a person is at the highest possible genetic risk for developing the MS degenerative disease. A look into the history of the disorder, Jean Martin Charcot was the first person to discover MS. Uh, statistically, many people are diagnosed between age 20 and 50, and it is common amongst people of European descent. Symptoms include numbing of limbs, visual disturbances, difficulty with coordination, and more. As multiple sclerosis progresses, people can end up with complete paralysis and a shortened lifespan. With the trauma this condition can cause, one of the support groups for this disorder uh, is the MS Trust, which provides information and supports healthcare professionals who strive to fight this disease. Now, many studies have been conducted to delay symptoms of MS as it is currently an incurable disease. But the one in particular I will be focusing on today is the study based on CRISPR. CRISPR is technology that allows for genetic editing in which RNA guide sequences target specific genes where CRISPR-associated Cas proteins are used for such editing. The technology is implemented in order to slow down and hopefully halt the cells that die in the central nervous system. It has been found that the protein clotho has been linked to nerve survival as well as promoting remyelination of demyelinated axons. It is an anti-aging protein that enhances cognition in which it is the core receptor for fibroblast growth factor, thus maintains the homeostasis of the endocrine system. The method of this procedure began with guides that clone the sgRNA plasmid in order to target the clotho translation initiation site. Four of the best guides were selected after filtration and cloned into sgRNA. The double nicking strategy reduces off-target activity in cell lines, which enables higher specificity with genome editing. The CRISPR design tool was used specifically to obtain the most accurate off-target scores as the guide targeted Clotho 3 UTR. The P2A and LUC sequence was implemented into the double-stranded breaks site of the Clotho 3 UTR uh, through tra co-transfection to a DNA template. The isolated clonal cell lines with P2A and LUC inserts developed after the two pairs of gRNA and template plasmids were inserted into the human embryonic kidney 293 cells. The Terra PCR direct kit by contact confirmed the positive and LUC lines. Positive controls of Adalern were used for FLUC and silnidipine were used as control for the activation of the clotho promoter. The NLUC with the clotho promoter was measured in an NLUC knock in HEC 293 cell line. It became evident that Four guides with the best target scores were chosen for the gene activation. Using a dual luciferous coincidence reporter system, the clotho promoter ended up in the stoichiometric expression of both orthologous reporters. The two luciferous inhibitors, known as silnidipine and autolorin, were both responsive in the PGK system as hypothesized and validated the idea that sgRNAs activated only the clotho gene expression and not the PGK promoter. Using a CRISPR and LUX knock in a uh, HEC-293 cell line, this genome editing technology allowed for the system to be created in which clotho transcript and NLUC can be identified in the P2A sequence, thus monitoring the clotho gene transcription through the activity of NLUC in order to solidify the impact of the sgRNA on the clotho gene activation. sgRNA plasmids were implemented in the NLUC knock-in HEC-293 cell line where it was clear that the activated clotho gene transcription was present. Viewing the clotho gene activation in HEC2 and SY5Y cells, it showed that the clotho expression in cell lines within the brain and kidney were activated. The SAM complex was transfected into the HK2 cells where sgRNA3 and 4 proved that clotho mRNA and protein levels were risen. The Western blot test showed an increase of clotho protein expression and activation in neuronal SY5Y cells. In both cell lines, sgRNA increased mRNA expression and show that there were possible post-transcriptional regulation of the clotho protein expression. This figure demonstrates the sgRNA target site for the clotho gene. It shows a laid out view of the clotho gene area in which the sgRNA targets are present. The blue color represents the sgRNA sequence and the pink color represents the uh, proto-spacer adjacent motif, which is PAM. 
This figure highlights the Clotho gene activation with the Firefly NLUC under the control of Clotho 4 KB promoter. The cells were analyzed by the Luciferus, and the negative control was the sgRNA cloning, and the positive control was the EGR1 transfected cells. The PGK promoter system confirmed that the use of silnidipine and adalorin were present. Uh, this is a presentation of the gene activation through the use of CRISPR and LUC knock-in HK2293. Uh, there is visualization of the P2A and LUC sequence that was inserted at the DSP site as well as confirmation of positive clones. The clotho gene activation was evident in the kidney or HK2. The data demonstrates the negative control and SAM evaluation in the neuronal SY5Y lines. In conclusion, the study revealed that implementing the clotho gene expression with the CRISPR DCAS9 SAM complex helped identify whether the sgRNA would target the clotho promoter region and effectively activate the clotho gene. CRISPR technology, in terms of this study, provided positive results as boosted clotho levels, which proved essential for the increase in cognition and rehabilitation of neurons. It is understandable that genome editing can be viewed as ethical in order to create and destroy various diseases, but not for the use of genetic enhancements, for example. The study opened a door for those who struggle with MS, giving a people a chance to have a positive quality of life. Here are my references, and I appreciate you for listening to my presentation. Thank you.